This is the Apollo Air and Apollo Air Pro. With the same name and totally different specs, the Air beats two well-known champion entry-level scooters, but not how you'd think. With sporty good looks and superior handling, the Apollo Air and Apollo Air Pro are flat out more fun. In this review, we'll cover all the standard specs and show you how the Air delivers a comfortable ride while attacking a weakness that most entry-level scooters are known for. They're stiff and a little boring, and the Air is anything but. The Air and Air Pro are the newest models from Apollo. The base Air comes with a 10-inch tire and spring suspension up front, and an eight and a half inch tire and disc brake at the back. The Pro has a touch more power, dual 10 inch tires, and a slightly different front end with a fork suspension and a front drum brake. We're comparing the Air and Air Pro against two standout scooters in the mid-range commuter category. With Apollo's pre-order discounts, you get $100 off of the Air and $150 off of the Air Pro, making the base Air and Xiaomi M365 equal in price and the Pro $50 less than the stalwart Segway Max G30 LP. With 374 watt hours of capacity, the Air Pro has the largest battery and longest range of all four scooters. The base Air comes in third with just three tenths of a mile more range than the G30 LP. The Air Pro also takes the lead when it comes to top speed at a little less than one mile per hour faster than the G30 LP. The base Air is around a mile slower than the M365, which takes third. The Air Pro beats the M365 to 15 miles per hour by just three tenths of a second. The base Air trails behind about a second behind its peers. The Ninebot Max is fastest up our 10% grade incline, but none of these scooters is a hill climbing beast. The M365 comes in second with the Air Pro close behind, with the base Air taking almost 10 seconds to catch up to the group. Both Air models did great on 4-6% to hills during our range test, but we'd recommend avoiding hills steeper than 10%. The scooters at each price point match up closely in terms of braking ability. The base Air and the Xiaomi M365 are within 6 inches of each other, as are the Air Pro and Ninebot Max. The base Air and Air Pro both have good performance, but excellent ride quality. Although slightly different builds, they ride very similarly and both have exceptional handling for the entry-level class. We love the Max and M365 for their solid performance, but they're both built without suspension, resulting in a stiff and kind of bumpy ride. The Air and Air Pro are super sporty without being super fast, giving beginners experience on a performance-style scooter with great handling but limited speed. When applying the throttle, the Air scooters have a sporty feel, as you'll get a more immediate response than on the Max or the M365. The regen braking, on the other hand, feels a little too strong at times, and we found it especially noticeable at low speeds. The cockpit is set up nicely for beginners with a centered display, single brake lever on the left, and a thumb throttle on the right. It's easy to use because you can select riding modes with a single click and enable cruise control with three clicks. We do wish the display was a bit brighter as it's difficult to read the smaller details when it's sunny outside. There's plenty of standing room on the unique deck which is wider at the front and tapers near the rear. When it comes to the suspension, they both handle really well with a single spring on the Air and dual springs on a fork style stem on the Air Pro. One other difference is that the Air Pro is half an inch higher off the ground than the base model. The progressive profile tires result in a super stable, incredibly smooth and quiet ride. Their blunt shape helps keep the scooter stable at speed, bank around corners with confidence, and contend with ruts in the road without throwing you off balance. The suspension on both the base Air and Air Pro helps smooth out the ride and don't bottom out. But the fork suspension on the Pro has a tiny clunk when it tops out, but it's probably something only a really fussy rider like myself would notice. The Apollo Air is far more likely to turn heads than most other entry-level scooters, as the elegant and striking all-black design sets them apart from the scooters that Trina says are as good-looking as office printers. We've noticed that scooter manufacturers, including Apollo, are opting for more customized, user-friendly configurations and components in next-gen scooters like their Phantom. They're moving away from the standard QSS4 trigger throttle in exchange for larger, more sophisticated displays and thumb throttles, leading to better ergonomics and top-shelf appeal. The Air mimics this innovation in an entry-level scooter, but it still has a fast feel to it with upswept handlebars and a sportier ride than most beginner scooters. The hand grips are round and 
grippy for lack of a better word, providing good hand support, and the simple controls and display have a durable quality feel. You won't notice any noises or stem flex with the Air Air Pro. They're both exceptionally quiet and rattle free. Like other Apollo scooters, the Air and Air Pro are IP rated meaning they're built to sustain a drizzle, it shouldn't really be ridden in heavy rain. The base has a smaller diameter tire on the split rear rim, making it a little easier to change tubes if you get it flat. All other wheels are pneumatic tires on solid rims. To be a bit more beginner friendly, we would have preferred split rims all the way around or tubeless like the 9Bot Max. The airs have front and rear fenders that will direct water away from the deck with really exceptional coverage at the sides of the rear fenders. Also, Apollo has taken measures to guard against damage, like encasing electrical connectors and heat shrink and using a double cover over the battery and motor controller. We like the angle of the kickstand and the stand itself feels sturdy. However, it's a little difficult to deploy. You have to tilt the scooter away from yourself to see it and hook it with your toe. The tires are probably our favorite thing about the Air. They're relatively blunt in tire profile, meaning the contact patch between the tire and the road is more similar to the Cabo Wolf Warrior than to the Xiaomi M365, as the tire surface puts 30% more rubber on the road. The Apollo Air is pretty portable but not the most compact. Although it's under 35 pounds, the overall build is fairly large and can't be made smaller. As with the Xiaomi and the 9Bot, the stem doesn't telescope and the handlebars don't fold. And when folded, the Pro is half an inch taller and longer than the base Air. The clamp style folding mechanism has a wide latch that securely holds the stem upright. To fold the scooter, release the clamp, slide it up, and the stem will swing down towards the deck. You have to guide the folding hook towards the ring on the deck to latch, lift, and carry it. When not being used, both the hook and the ring recess nicely into the scooter for minimal interference. And the hook is kept in place on the stem magnetically, which is a thoughtful design. It isn't the most compact or the easiest to carry when folded, as the handlebars are almost two feet wide and the balance point when lifting is right over the cabling. However, the size feels manageable for most riders, and the Apollo Air and Air Pro both pass the trunk test on this Honda. You'll still have room to stow a duffel bag, a case of water, or another Apollo Air. Both the Air and Air Pro have strong safety features for light commuting, including a high-mounted headlight that you can tilt, a bell for warning other riders, a brake-sensing taillight and reflectors on the rear fender, and an empty space to attach a license plate, which is a nice addition for riders in some regions. The Pro has a more effective braking package with a drum up front and region at the rear, resulting in a 35% shorter braking distance than the base Air. We call the Pro's braking great, and the Air is pretty good considering its lower 15.6 mile per hour top speed. Overall, the Apollo Air has a great safety package for casual commuting, but does it get the big dog seal of approval? All right, Raymond here with Electric Scooter Guy, and I'm here to talk about the Apollo Air and Air Pro. Let's get right into it. The Apollo Air, you know, it's not the fastest for big dogs, but the Apollo Pro, I like that one. Like, it's not truly meant for big dogs. Like, none of these scooters are. Like, the 9 Bot is rated at 220 pounds. But, you know, we actually ride these scooters. The handling of it is pretty good. You know, it's not stiff. You can hit corners. And it has this double suspension, which most of these entry scooters do not have. And you can kind of, you know, bounce on it. It's easier to balance. Like I got on it and it's just like, look at me, boom. I'm not saying right one hand, you shouldn't, but you know, you, you can roll with this because it's, it's that sturdy. The performance is still lacking, big dogs, hill climb, you know, that's a, a thing for us. And this scooter is not it, because you know, that's not what it's made for. But to find out if it's truly, truly big dog approved, click the ESG website and you know, and I'm out. Overall pros include exceptional stability and handling, striking design, beginner-friendly, rider-focused features, and a strong safety feature set. Overall cons include regenerative braking response could be smoother, display could be brighter, and kickstand is a little hard to deploy. With the Air and Air Pro, Apollo has proven that practical scooters don't have to look or feel boring. Both the base and Pro models deliver a superbly stable ride. It feels sporty, fast and fun and has the presence of a high performance scooter at an entry level price. With enough speed and range for everyday commuting, the Apollo Air is an exceptional beginner scooter because it looks good and handles even better. What's your favorite beginner scooter? Let us know in the comments. If you want a more in-depth account of the Air, join us on ESG Live Show number 86 for the deep dive. This is Paul with Electric Scooter Guide. Ride safe and don't forget to wear your helmet.
If you've never ridden an electric scooter and want the basics, check out our 10 commandments to electric scooter riding below. And if you want to compare with the best electric scooters as rated by over 2,000 actual riders, check out our top scooters of 2021.